All right, hi, welcome back. Attorney Steve Bonner and hoping you're having a great day. Today on this episode of Litigation Whiteboard, we are talking about personal jurisdiction. Now, when you're in a lawsuit and you're a defendant, you want to be sued in the right place. If you're living in California in the Northern District, you don't want somebody suing you out in Florida or Texas, New York. You don't want that kind of thing. It's a question of personal jurisdiction, the power of the court to render a decision and binding decision that can be forced against you. So you need to know a little bit about something about personal jurisdiction when you are a defendant. Um, the three key things you always wanna look at when you're a defendant, does the court have personal jurisdiction over me? Does the court have subject matter jurisdiction over the type of lawsuit being filed? Are we in the proper venue? Law students, that's what you're looking for. You're gonna argue those three things. If you have those three things, the court can enter a valid and binding decision against you. So that means, if you're gonna take a default, you are risking it because the court can have valid jurisdiction over you. But let's take a look. Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard. All right, here we are. Okay, so really personal jurisdiction, again, is the it's the power of the court to render a decision. Here's my defendant right here. There's my, oh, must be doing a lot of whiteboards here, running right through the pens. Let's get rid of that. All right, let's go to my, let's go to my, let's go to my red, no, let's go to my purple pen. All right, so um, here's my defendant. Let's see if it works. There, that looks good, doesn't it? So there's our defendant. The defendant, here's your court. Let's say it's the Central District of California. And the defendant, let's say, is in New York, okay? New York. Uh, there's a complaint and a summons. The summons is the is the power of the court ordering you to appear, ordering you to appear. And if you don't, they're going to enter your default. Okay. So what happens sometimes though is you're in New York and you're like, why on earth am I being sued out here in California? Can they do that? So they call Attorney Steve. Hey, Attorney Steve, can they do that? And I say, well, there is a challenge, a legal challenge that can be made. If, now we're talking federal court. When I say Central District of California, we're talking federal court. It could be a state court. I do mostly f uh, federal stuff here. Um, but you have a challenge, a legal challenge, FRCP 12B2. Anybody know what FRCP stands for? Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. If you got that, you're on the right track. 12B2, B as in biscuit, 12B2 challenging PJ, challenging personal jurisdiction right here. As you can see, the goal is to prevent forum shopping. We don't want someone just to say, hey, you know, um, this guy's out here, we got a copyright case, but but I'd rather go with the uh, jurisdiction over here because the case law is a little better or it's a different statute of limitation, something different um, about the law. So we don't want people, we don't want litigants just picking the best court, the best, hey, they got better judges here, they got better this, better better uh, verdicts here. We do not want form shopping, uh, that's no good, okay? So you talk about that in your bar exam, you're gonna be doing that, personal jurisdiction. So you have the complaint, the summons, the service of process, this is a whole nother uh, series of challenges that can be raised here, 12B5, as you can see in the red. If there's defects in the summons, that's a 12B4, FRCP on all these, FRCP, 12B4, 12B5. But the personal jurisdiction challenge, that's 12B2, 12B2. And usually what you're gonna wanna do is make a special appearance saying, judge, I'm coming in on behalf of my client out here in New York challenging personal jurisdiction. I am not subject, we're not agreeing to the jurisdiction of the court. We are filing a special appearance. Look at that, special appearance. And you're gonna get that filed and you're going to argue why there is no jurisdiction. If you're the plaintiff, you're gonna say why there is jurisdiction. And that all comes down to the attorney Steve pyramid of success right here. Here's your pyramid of success. Your bar students, this is it. I'm breaking it down for you. Who can do it any easier than this? If, if you're crash course, last minute, you hear all this jurisdictional stuff, it's all over, oh my God, international shoe and this and helicopteros and all this stuff. Um, I'm gonna break it down to you very basic, okay, very basic. Um, when I look at an attack on personal jurisdiction, I like to just, I, I have my pyramid of success here. I learned it in law school. This is what I created. Here's how I analyze personal jurisdiction. One, uh, lay this down on your, lay, lay this down in your bar exam. 
constitutional minimum contacts. Are there constitutional minimum contacts? Does this defendant have minimal contacts with California such that it would be constitutional, that it would be fair, um, fair play and substantial justice? Do you see those words? Throw those down. Is it fair play and substantial justice to haul in the defendant into this foreign jurisdiction? They're on the other side of the United States. You're gonna haul them in? Um, so throw that down, let them know you understand. I believe that's your international, uh, your international shoe case if you wanna throw that down. But um, from there, now, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Now, I'm gonna change pen colors here. Now we really wanna just dig into the meat and this is my approach. So that's step one, I lay it down. Step two, I talk about general jurisdiction. Is there general jurisdiction? Now this is really based on the home where somebody is located, where's the home for this defendant, okay? And the home is different depending on whether it's a person, a corporation, an LLC, or a partnership. These are different types of legal business entities. And so let's take a look at that. If you're a person, your jurisdiction is really where you are dom domiciled with the intent to stay. Now, this person may say, well, I live out here in the Hamptons. That's where I live. That's where my house is. You can check the public records. I live out here, living the good life, and uh, I intend to stay here. This is where I live. So, so obviously, he's in New York. That's in California, so, so there is no general jurisdiction for this person. So we're going to have to go down to the next one. But before I do, um, let's talk about the home, the home for the corporation. Uh, corporations are usually deemed um, home or the, the uh, uh, the place of business is where the company is incorporated. So say this guy was a, actually was a, sued as a company. Now he lives in New York, but he has a company, okay? He has a company that streams videos, let's say, and he's being sued out here for streaming videos, okay? So now that he's a corporation, however, we look, where is he incorporated? So maybe he's incorporated in New York. Okay, under the New York uh, Secretary of State or whatever they called out there. So, well, that's still not a grounds. You still can't get there because that's not the home. However, um, the courts will also look at what we call the, so that's a place of incorporation, state of incorporation, or the headquarters, or the nerve center, or the principal place of business. There's a lot of different things. Let's just talk generally right now. You, there's lots of different things here, but say uh, his streaming business has an office in San Francisco. Okay, that's, well, that could be, could be jurisdiction, but it's down in, in Central District. Maybe that's a venue issue. Maybe a better venue would be in uh, the San Francisco Northern District Courts. That's another question. But also, let's say he has a business that's also a location in Los Angeles, okay? Well, now that is that is um, down here in Central District of California, you may be able to find general jurisdiction, systematic and continuous contacts is what they say, systematic and continuous. That's what this is, systematic, continuous. They're here doing business all the time, enjoying the benefits of the California system, this and that and the other, okay? So that could get you jurisdiction. Now. LLCs and partnerships, uh, general rule, you can sue them in any state where there is a member of the LLC or any state where a partner can be found. So if you have 25 partners in your business or 25, um, um, you have 25 members of your LLC, they're called members, and they're all over the place, happens to be one out here in California, well, the good, that gives you jurisdiction now. Now you have personal jurisdiction, okay? Um, now, if you have that, you got it made. You got it made, you got them, end the analysis, continue with the exam. But you, at least you discuss personal jurisdiction, you may be talking service of process, you may be tacking a fatal defect in the summons. Uh, usually those are pretty rare, but not to say it can't happen. So, let's say you find no general jurisdiction he really doesn't own any, have any business out here, nothing like that, so let's get rid of that. So we go general jurisdiction. Uh, we do not see a grounds for general jurisdiction, as you, you would put on your exams. Then go to your next step three. One, two, three. I'm giving you the, uh, uh, the recipe for success here. Uh, specific jurisdiction. Then you say, well, wait a second, okay. 
He doesn't have any business, doesn't live out here. It's not his home. There's no members of the LLC out here. Well, then what? How, how can the courts exercise jurisdiction on him? This is where it gets good, and this is where you're probably going to end up on your exam talking about specific jurisdiction. Now, this is where you get to use all those fun words from law school, purposeful availment, directed or activities toward the forum. Um, the brunt of the injury can be felt in the forum, these kinds of things. For example, um, these courts, like central district courts, are very protective of their local movie industry, the big, the big hitters. So, you know, the courts are gonna, they're gonna, to me, they're gonna bend over backwards to find jurisdiction. So you gotta come in and really have it, really have it nailed, okay? Northern District, a lot of uh, technology, software companies, things like that. Northern District, they say, hey, if the brunt of the injury can be felt here, then you have jurisdiction here. Specific, not general, but you would have specific jurisdiction. So there's your buzzwords, purposeful availment, directing your activity, the brunt of the injury, and also if you're served in state. So if this guy happens to be out here and he says, I'm going to take a trip out to California. And, and uh, one of the plaintiffs says, hi, nice to meet you. Welcome to sunny Southern California. You are served. That can form a basis for personal jurisdiction. Okay. Um, I put this down here. This is, you may or may not see this, but the final grounds for jurisdiction is if somebody has property in the state, say there's a $200,000 judgment against this person in New York. So, but say they have a, they have a, house in Malibu right here, and, and they owe $200,000, that could be exercising in rem jurisdiction, dealing with the property. Okay, you see how that works? You might find that on the exam. I bet a lot of people would miss that, even if it was on there, but catch that. You're Attorney Steve student. You don't miss issues. You, you spot all the issues, talk about them. That's what we do here. Okay, so that's specific jurisdiction, general specific, the in rem. I gave you the 12B, uh, come in 12B2, special appearance. There you have it. The Attorney Steve Pyramid of PJ, personal jurisdiction success. There it is, folks. That would take the average person about a month of law school to figure all this, this out, to have a rubric that you can rely on. That's something good here. But this is general legal information only and not legal advice. So you gotta do your own research. You gotta do your own research. That's, a, that's the fun baby. So uh, that's about it. I just want to say, Pasabu, Pasabu. Thank you for watching. Attorney Steve, you need help civil litigation, you know where to find me on the web at attorneysteve.com. Have a great day. I got to run. Lots of work to do. Bye now.